My name is Krishna Pilurla. I'm a final year PhD student at the University of Washington. Today, I'm going to talk about MOV, an information divergence measure between neural text and human text. This is joint work with collaborators from the University of Washington, the, the Allen Institute for AI, and Stanford University. Let's get started. Much of the recent explosive progress in natural language processing has been driven by enormous language models. The latest generation of these models, such as GPT-3, are all based on the transformer. Much of the gigantic leap in performance can be attributed to an explosion of model size, as illustrated by this figure on the right. These enormous language models are also widely influential and adopted across both academia and industry. For instance, uh, models, uh, methods based on enormous language models hold the state of the art in a variety of text generation tasks ranging from translation to summarization. These enormous language models also have a new capability which previous generations of models even three years back did not. They can write long essays with remarkably high quality. This has led to the emergence of a new task known as open-ended text generation, where the model is given a prompt and it must generate text in continuation of the prompt. Perhaps the most striking example of open-ended generation is this passage on Ovid's Unicorn written by GPT-2. GPT-3, the latest iteration of this model, is even better. We only show the first two sentences of this generation, but in general, the task can require longer generations, such as one or two paragraphs, or even an entire essay. The open-ended generation capabilities of the enormous language models are also leveraged widely, and they're even deployed commercially, as a quick web search shows us. While the text generated by these enormous language models is incomparably better than those of the pre than models of the previous generation, the text still contains subtle errors. For instance, the text could be bland or repetitive, they could contain logical or continuity flaws, or the text can be completely off prompt. The new task of open generation leads to an even newer question. How close really is the generated text to human text? What makes this question hard to answer is that there are multiple correct and equally valid continuations possible for any given prompt. For instance, looking at this example on the right, there's no reason to prefer GPT-2's continuation over the other two. In this work, we give a statistical diagnostic tool which can quantify how close the text generated by a model is to human written text. So, how do we compare machine text with human text? As I said previously, there can be multiple correct completions, so traditional evaluation measures based on gold references do not apply to this setting. The current gold standard for comparing machine text with human text is with a human evaluation. However, this is problematic because human evaluation is expensive and unreliable. I will also mention that automatic heuristics such as, such as perplexity are employed, but these heuristics only measure the quality of the model and not of the generated text. Therefore, these heuristic measures cannot capture the effect of the decoding algorithm or how long the generated text is. We overcome all of these issues by directly comparing the distribution of the generated text to the distribution of human text. We measure how close these two distributions are to each other. Let us start by visualizing the distribution of human written text in blue, also denoted by P, 
with the distribution of machine generated text shown here in red and denoted by q now there are two types of errors that the machine distribution q can make related to the human distribution p the first one which we call the type 1 error happens when the model q places high mass on text which is unlikely to be written by humans this could happen for instance if the model tends to generate degenerate or highly repetitive text the second type of error which we call the type 2 error happens when the model q cannot produce legitimate human written text this could happen because of truncation heuristics used by state of the art decoding algorithms such as nucleus sampling now we note that the kl divergence and the reverse kl divergence are a natural way of quantifying these two errors for instance the kl divergence klqp is large when there is a region where q is large but p is small therefore this quantifies a type 1 error likewise klpq quantifies the type 2 error while this is well and good it's also problematic because the kl divergences can be infinite in particular when the support of p and q are not identical one or more of these two kl divergences could be infinite instead we propose to softly measure the kl and the reverse kl divergences with a mixture of p and q by varying the mixture weight we get a family of type 1 and type 2 errors which can be plotted as a curve shown here on the right we call this the divergence curve and it captures the full trade off between type 1 and type 2 errors this is reminiscent of the notion of precision recall curves for generative models introduced by sajati et al in the context of computer vision and then extended by jolonga et al we define mov as the area under this curve it summarizes the complete trade off between the type 1 and type 2 errors in a single scalar it takes values between 0 and 1 1 being p and q are identical and 0 meaning they're completely dissimilar next we turn to computing mov in practice mov requires computing a kl divergence which involves a sum over all documents x now this is intractable for neural language models therefore our computation pipeline first takes a deep encoding which gives a continuous distribution in an embedding space and this encoding captures the important features of the text now estimating a kl divergence of a high dimensional continuous distribution is still hard therefore we apply a vector quantization method to get a low k dimensional discrete distribution now in this quantized space we can efficiently compute all the kl diverge divergences required by mov by simply summing over the k dimensions experimentally we find that mov correlates with human judgments to test this we run a head to head human evaluation between eight different models and human written text we present human judges with two completions a and b and we ask them which one is more human like which one is more interesting and which one is more sensible we measure the spearman rank correlation between mov and the ranking produced by the human judgments we also repeat this for two other comparison measures in from the literature starting with how human like the text is we find that mov has a high correlation with human judgments in particular the spearman correlation is 0.95 and it is higher than those of the other measures considered in the literature moving on to how interesting and how sensible the text is we observe the same trend where mov has the highest correlation 
therefore across the board, MOVE correlates the strongest with human judgments. Next, we find that MOVE also captures empirically important trends. As I mentioned at the start of the presentation, much of the recent progress in NLP is built upon scaling up the model size. And we test this for open-ended generation with MOV. In fact, MOV finds that larger models lead consistently to higher quality text. And that's also confirmed by the human evaluations. Next, we look at the effect of the decoding algorithm. Greedy decoding or likelihood maximization has been shown to produce degenerate and highly repetitive text. MOV identifies this and correctly rates greedy de decoding with a low score, almost zero. Decoding algorithms, on the other hand, based on truncation heuristics, such as nuclear sampling, have been empirically observed to produce the best quality text. MOV captures this as well. Next, moving on to text length. Models are very capable of producing one or two sentences of very high quality, but the longer the length of the generation gets, the more errors start to show up. In fact, MOVE captures this across model sizes as it finds that as the length of the text generation increases, the, the distribution of the generated text drifts away from the distribution of human written text. MOVE perfectly captures all of these trends while each of the baselines from the literature fail on one or more of these trends. Finally, we have a PyTorch package which can be installed via pip. The GitHub link is shown on the screen. And the package is also very straightforward to use as shown by this simple example. Finally, the code and the scripts to replicate our experimental results are also available online at this GitHub link. With this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you for listening.